Hello, Namaste. Today we are going to discuss on rhinosinusitis, clinical features and management. There are certain definitions of rhinosinusitis. It is defined as inflammation of lining in mucosa of nose and paranasal sinuses. Acute rhinosinusitis is defined as infection lasting for less than 4 weeks, subacute as infection lasting for 4 to 12 weeks, and chronic for infection lasting for more than 12 weeks. So, chronic sinusitis is defined as the infection of the nose and paranasal sinuses, which lasts for more than 3 months of duration. So, recurrent acute uh, is defined as more than 3 episodes of rhinosinusitis in 6 months or equals to or more than 4 episodes in a year. Each episode lasting for 7 to 10 days without persistent symptoms of rhinosinusitis is called as recurrent acute. So, in between the patient is alright. So, it has, they have to have either more than 3 episodes in 6 months or more than 4 episodes in 1 year. The types again can be acute, subacute, and chronic recurrent as a told. Might be open or closed depending on its drainage of the, of the sinuses, mucosa, ostium, so unilateral or bilateral, maxillary, frontal, ethmoidal, or spinal according to sinus infect uh, related, single multi organ sinuses, how many sinuses being involved, inter posterior group of sinuses, then suppurative or hypertrophic, might be pause or might be just inflammatory process like immune allergic conditions, might be bacterial, might be fungal, might be allergic or occupational form of rhinosinusitis. Basic duties of rhinosinusitis lies in either rhinogenic origin or other origins. Rhinogenic origin is the commonest one, around 85%, following any form of rhinitis like again initially viral infection, then bacterial invasion, dental maxillary sinusitis, root abscess and dental procedures. Uh, Basically, the maxillary sinus is the common one because the infection can spread from two throats to the maxillary sinus. In trauma, rotary accidents, swimming, diving, foreign bodies, barotrauma, everything might lead to trauma of the sinuses leading to infection. Iatrogenic, sometimes due to nasal packing and septic surgery. Hematogenesis is rare, but might happen in immunocompromised individuals. What are the predisposing factors? They are mucosal edema leading to viral, bacterial, allergic, irritant, isomotoral, barotraumatic conditions. So mechanical obstruction of uh, the sinus ostium by DNS with spar, poly, hypertrophic turbinates, funga bullosa, paradoxical male turbinate, halar cell, large bulla hypodialis, agar nezai, unsmith anomaly, nasal tumors, foreign bodies, and nasal packing. All are, most of them are the anomalies of the osteomatal complex. So, mucosal abnormality like uh, Young syndrome, cystic fibrosis, mucobistosis, and dehydration, all these conditions also might lead to uh, in the chronic sinusitis. Mucosal disturbance, disturbance like cartagenous syndrome, viral infection, bacterial infections, allergic, smoking, pollutants, hypoxia, dry air, extremes of temperature, and sinusitis all might lead to sinusitis, chronic form. Miscellaneous conditions like poor health, immunodeficiency, diabetes, nutritional deficiency, those are the common factors. So, just coming to the uh, pathology, mucosal edema and mechanical obstruction lead to sinus ostium obstruction, which leads to hypoxia, leading to base dilatation, serial dysfunction, or mucosal abnormality. Those base dilatation leads to transudation, serial dysfunction leads to stagnation, and mucus abnormal leads to viscous secretion, all lead to, lead to retained thick secretions leading to poor gland secretion sinusitis. So, sinus ostium obstruction again leads to pressure, negative pressure within the sinus, which leads to nasal bacteria enter the sinus and inflammation. Again, there will be poor gland secretions. So, this is the normal sinus, which the ostium is quite open, and in this is a blocked sinus, infected sinus, this is the infection, where the ostium is closed. So, infection starts when the ostium becomes closed, and the, the secretions cannot come out, or the debris cannot come out from the sinus ostium. Bacteria, as you know, the most common uh, bacteria in acute sinusitis being Staphylococcus pneumoniae and in chronic sinusitis, Staph aureus. Other are the common bacteria that can, that can be seen here, like Hemophilus, Moraxella, Staph aureus, Nisseria, in chronic Staphylococcus, Yersinia, Bacteria, and Pseudomonas. Progress of disease, uh, severity, and resolution of disease depends upon either the sinus is closed or open, the virulence of the organism, how strong is the virus. The organism, the host resistance, how strong is the host and treatment received. So, here you can see the osteomatal complex is key area, as you know, 
for position of infection in inter group sinuses. Any pathological variants of ostomal complex play a major role in causation of sinusitis due to reduced ventilation and drainage of the sinuses. So, this is the most important area that you can see here. So, all the anomalies of OMC might lead to uh, sinusitis. <coughs> Clinical features of blind sinusitis are symptoms. There will be nasal discharge with mucoid, purulent, or blood stained. This will have nasal obstruction with hyposmia or anosmia, headache, and facial pain. So, cheek pain, eyelid congestion, and swelling. Hawking, sore throat and dry irritating cough, earache which is associated with stretching tube dysfunction and the constant symptoms like fever, malaise, body ache are rare but they might, they are not very uncommon. So let's not pay facial pain in random sinusitis, so this is important. In majority sinusitis, the patient will have pain on the cheek, upper jaw, forehead that increases on bending down. Frontal sinusitis, the patient will have forehead pain that increases during morning and decreases by the late afternoon, so it's called officiary because when the patient sleeps, then the, the secretions will be stagnated in the frontal sinus. But when the patient gets out of sleep, when the patient stands up, then all the drainage is slowly uh, draining down. So that leads to pain in the morning time, so slightly relieving of pain in the afternoons. In the moid, there will be pain in the nasal bridge and periorbital area, more in eye movement. And in post moid, there will be deep seated retrovital pain or headache. In small sinusitis, there will be pain in the vortex. Area and the retrovital pain. Different, there are different signs of uh, sinusitis that you should know. They are congested and erymatous nasal mucosa, nasal discharge, basically in the anterior group sinuses, and the, uh, it will come anteriorly, and the posterior group sinuses that will go more posterior. So, in the anterior group, there will be it requires some middle meatus, like frontal, maxillary, anterior point. And to the superior meatus in cases of postethmoid and the spinal sciences. There shall be tenderness over the paranasal sciences area. There will be postnasal drip, granular pharyngitis, there will be cheek swelling in maxillary sinusitis, and there will be in the ethmoid and frontal sinusitis. So, uh, commonly in the practicals, you will be asked to palpate the paranasal sinus tenderness. Maxillary sinus have to palpate over the canine fossa. In the you have to palpate medial to medial canthus, frontal towards the floor of sinus are the superior middle aspect of the orbit, or to have its interior, or in the forehead, this is the inferior wall, this is the floor, superior middle aspect of the orbit, and this is the interior wall. So, diploic bone, therefore, you have, to, you have to tap there. See, this is for the maxillary sinus in the canine fossa, and this is for the frontal sinus in the superior middle aspect of the orbit. So, transformation test for sinusitis uh, and the Posterior trip. Transmission test is not commonly performed nowadays. <coughs> Posterior test, they are also historical, but uh, you have to do it's performed in acute sinusitis, active nasal discharge in the process clean in supine position and patient sits upright. When post appears, so is a frontal or sinus, sinusitis is there. Post appears and stooping forward, there will be similar sinusitis, and when there is no discharge, patient is asked to lie in the lateral position with affected side up, and if the post appears, there is major sinusitis. They are not very common nowadays. This is important time sinusitis task force criteria. The major criteria being facial pain and pressure. The, there will be nasal obstruction, nasal discharge, or disc, discolored post nasal drip, hyposmia, anosmia, prudence and examination, or fever. In acute sinusitis, they are the common major factors. The minor factors like headache, fever, halitosis. Fatigue, dental pain, cough, ear pain, pressure, and fullness are the minor things. So, presence of two major criteria and one major plus two minor criteria is taken as sinusitis. What are the investigations performed for sinusitis? They are diagnostic injury endoscopy, maxillary sinuscopy, X ray PNS, ultrasound of maxillary sinus, so rhinus scan, CT scan of PNS, MRI, allergic tests, proof points of enter was. For maxillary sinusitis, <coughs> endoscopic microscope for culture and sensitivity, and fungal culture of tissue and discharge for fungal sinusitis. This is a diagnosis in the endoscope that you can see the endoscope is uh, inserted in the nasal cavity, and you can just inspect the different areas. You can see for medial meatus purpose, either the process anteriorly or posteriorly. Then you can see inferior meatus, you can see superior meatus, everything can be visualized. So, we can go up to the nasal pharynx and we can find out the disease process which is there. And then, indications for DNA are patients not responding to medical therapy. 
Anatomy factors is prevent electric examination by intraanoscopy. In the collection of pus from the hydrous seminaries, for pulse and sensory can be taken. So objective monitoring of the patient, suppose when the patient is being alright or not with medical treatment or surgery, then perioperative measurement inspection and cleaning is important. This you can in this slide, this is the endoscopic view of the nose that you can see is on the right nasal cavity. You can see pus in the middle matters. You can doing DNA, this signifies sinusitis. Majorly sinuscopy, the anterior sinus is perforated directly through the canine fossa between roots of third and fourth teeth with maxillary sinus trochar and cannula and trochar is removed and sinuscopy is introduced through the cannula to see inside the maxillary sinus which is not commonly performed nowadays. This is the inside of the maxillary sinus. You can see polypoid lesion over here and the pus can be seen but usually nowadays DNA is the number one diagnostic test. Linux of uh, PNS. Otis view, so called occipitomental view is simple done for maxillary sinus. You can see this is the maxillary sinus having pause. The air fluid level is seen here. This is the extraneous <coughs> OM view. In calvis view or occipital frontal view and lateral views are commonly done for frontal sinus. Ridge view, lateral oblique and lateral view are done for ethmoids. And scolbus view, the submental vertical and puris view, occipitomental with mouth open are done for spinoid. There are also historical nowadays except occipitomental view which is commonly performed. In case of uh, peers view, you can see air free levels in the acute sinusitis and mucosal thickening seen in the chronic sinusitis. This is the chronic sinusitis probably, so of involving one sinus, you can this is acute sinusitis having air free level. So sonography of penis is uh, not very commonly performed, this also is of historical interest. CD scan is the gold standard, it's the most reliable imaging modality for sinusitis at present. So, plain axial, coronal, and sagittal cords of 3 mm. Uh, nowadays, even 1 mm are performed. So, you can see very clear view of the sinuses being involved in the anatomy over here. So, contrast is used for suspected vascular lesion, neoplastic, and inflammatory lesions. It helps to determine the extent of disease, define the anatomical variants, and study the relationship of sinuses with surrounding structures. So, this is very important. CD scan of nose and PNS. Indications for CD nose and PNS are recurrent, acute, or chronic sinusitis, which does not respond to medical treatment. So, you have to see if either anatomical uh, variants or something else here. You can see there is DNS and there is Gabulus. These are the variants, these are the pathology. Before endoscopic sinus surgery, just to know the extent of the different disease processes or <coughs> pattern of air cells in the sinuses and impending complications of sinusitis. So, plain CT scan, nose and PNS in maxillary and ethmoid sinusitis. This is the maxillary sinusitis. Okay, upper spider and maxillary sinus. So, this is the polypoid region over here, and this is the ethmoid sinus, which can be well visualized. So, this is a gold standard investigation for sinusitis nowadays to study the PNS anatomy. So, city of frontal sinus, you can see the frontal sinusitis over here. This is the frontal sinus, and this is the pathology in the frontal sinus. In CT scan with spinal sinus, this is the spinal sinus which can on right side, this on left side, so right side is affected here. Memory of penis is usually not uh, indicated, but indications are to assist the intracranial extension of uh, sinus nasal disease, brain abscess due to sinusitis, and meningocele or incapacity. So basically, when the infection is supposed to go to brain, then we do MRI to form a linear plasms of sinus tract to know, to know the brain extension and to evaluate the orbital complications of sinusitis. So these are the only indications for MRI, but most commonly performed in the uh, investigation is CT scan. Thank you.